Hi, I'm Dr. Newman. Uh, welcome to English 366, Popular Fiction, the science fiction short story. Uh, sorry, uh, it's, this uh, in welcome video is a little bit late. Um, it's the intercession, so there's a quick turnaround from the end of my last session and the beginning of this one. But uh, in this short video, I'm going to quickly go over um, some of our major course themes. This is kind of an ideas video. And then I'll make another short video just showing you, um, if, you ha if you've been having any trouble, uh, where to find stuff on the blackboard. So let's talk about course themes. Um, science fiction, you probably know something about, right? You think about robots and rockets. Maybe you think about Star Trek or Star Wars. Maybe you think about... Um, uh, the Matrix or Cyberpunk 2077 or, or who knows. There's a lot of different, there's a big range of, of what science fiction means. Um, and science fiction has a pretty long history. Um, to, in my opinion, the first science fiction work uh, is The Blazing World by Margaret Cavendish, written in the uh, late 1600s, where um, a woman travels to another dimension and meets animal people. Um, it's really cool. And actually... Um, uh, if you've ever read uh, the His Dark Materials trilogy um, by um, author, author's name escapes me, um, but uh, that's based on The Blazing World to some extent. It's also a uh, clap back at C.S. Lewis. Um, but anyway, uh, yes, yeah, so science fiction, we, we get versions of it. You know, there, there are um, stories in the 18th and 19th century about taking balloons to the moon and stuff like that. And of course, the late 19th century, we get H.G. Wells and Jules Verne and the beginning of people thinking about what possibilities the new uh, technologies are opening up. Um, but our story, our class, really focuses on the 20th century and it focuses on three distinct periods of the 20th century. So our story is beginning in the 1930s and the first week uh, we're reading stories that are from uh, the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s. All of the stories in the first week are by white men. They're um, uh, British or American. Um, and they all uh, uh, share some things in common. And, and, and I'm going to just uh, hold on a second here. Let me bring up my slideshow. Now, the uh, computer that I'm recording this on is about six years old at this point. So it's, it's kind of um, getting a little ornery, ornery, as they say around here. And um, I, uh, so, so uh, forgive me if the syncing of my speech is off. I should just use the um, the slideshow so that we don't have to worry about that. In any case, um, here is uh, uh, the course themes that we were talking about. The first is some people say the word science fiction is a little bit too narrow, and they prefer to use, to use the term SF, saying that the F stands for speculative. Now, oops. Um, now, what does speculative means? It means kind of like imagining right? Speculating. Uh, and I myself, as, as I mentioned um, in my discussion board po intro post, am a specialist in medieval and Renaissance literature. And in medieval literature, there is a lot of, of speculative fiction. People have visions of other worlds. Dante uh, travels from hell through purgatory to heaven. And for him, this is science fiction in the sense that he is working in a system of knowledge where um, he is really going through the universe according to the scientific knowledge that he has. And, you know, John Milton wrote Paradise Lost in the 1600s um, with the idea that uh, there was a kind of, it was giving a kind of unified um, picture of the system of the world, and it was holding up a mirror to it. The word, lat the word speculative comes from a Latin word speculum, which means mirror. Um, so one of the things science fiction does is hold up a mirror to our own time by showing us a different world. Um, the, another thing about science fiction that um, really I think is very much on display in the first week, in the first unit on the Golden Age, but which continues throughout, is an emphasis on what we might call systems thinking. That is, how do the different parts of our lives as human beings connect with each other? technological systems, social systems, uh, economic systems. There's a way in which uh, science fiction wants to sort of analyze these things and take them apart and look at them and think about uh, how, for example, a particular 
um, type of technological system this week, for example, the logics that Leinster talks about, or the, the, the ridiculous rolling roads that Heinlein talks about. Um, these are systems, or in fact, the, um, the, ca the, the calendar systems and the rituals that Asimov talks about in, in Nightfall are, are all different kinds of systems. And, and I think thinking about systems, about uh, repeated processes and the materials that they're made out of is a big part of of science fiction as a genre and one of the things that i find it fascinating i just uh, last week watched uh denis villeneuve's um new film or, or not that it was like from last year his version of dune right and dune was written in the 1960s by frank herbert and it and it uh, was written at a time when there was a new interest in ecology as a system right and how um biological and, and, and geological systems work together and so his whole thing on the worms and the spice was an attempt to think through ecology and economics and and politics all together now of course science fiction tells stories and generally sto we we enjoy stories that aren't just big dumps of lore so to speak just just facts I mean, most people don't read encyclopedia entries for fun some people do i do i'm weird but people like their information in the forms of stories and they like to experience these systems through the eyes of an individual through the through a point of view character and so this tension in science fiction between wanting to build a world and describe its systems but also tell a story about an individual who's who wants something or fears something, who has a relationship with that system that they're trying to move through, or who is trying to cha indeed change or preserve a system. This is a big part of um, science fiction. And I think it's, and so th these are kind of just some basic big ideas that I'm giving you to think about as a means of comparing the stories that were and and the various subgenres that is the 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 smaller genres within science fiction that we'll explore um, and one of the things that science fiction uh, does is ask us whether systems can change it asks what alternatives to our way of life we can imagine there is a um, literary critic named Frederick Jameson who has talked about the turn um, at some point in the late 20th century away from utopias and more and more towards dystopias um, and dystopias as a kind of failure of imagination that we can't imagine a, a different way of a different system of life that works and he famously said and he's a Marxist but he said uh, it's easier to imagine the end of civilization than the end than the end of capitalism um, and you know, he was calling for a, for a renewal, perhaps, of, of a utopian kind of science fiction, a science fiction that imagines livable futures, livable alternatives. And I really think this is an appealing idea, especially at a time when there's such a, I feel like, a climate of, of, do, of doomerism. Um, and I, and I, I hope that this, um, this text can, can, or this class can, can inspire us to think alternatives to, to, you know, doom or more of the same. Um, in the first part of this class, uh, we're going to be looking this week, we're looking at the so-called golden age of science fiction. And of course, you know, golden age is subjective, but it, it has a kind of objective quality to it. And that if you use the term golden age, people know what you're talking about. Um, the golden age of science fiction was primarily a phenomenon of print. And when I say that it was a phenomenon of print, I mean that um, there were books, sure, but a lot of it was driven by short stories and by um, cheaply produced magazines that were enormously popular. They had print runs in the many of millions. They had print runs um, that TV shows today would love to get ratings like. We are, we were, we are in the age of mass culture. We're in the age when the radio has... Um, a f only a few channels and they're sh uh, playing radio plays be before television has been widely adopted and this again this is the period from the 30s to the 50s and i linked some radio plays that were adapted from some of our um uh, short stories that we're reading the, another thing about the golden age is the kind of interest uh, technology that it's interested in now sometimes there are some like weird breakout uh, stories that that 
go in a different direction. Like, for example, Leinster's A Logic Named Joe talks, uh, imagines a kind of role for personal computing and networked computing, which um, generally was not widely imagined in the 1950s when this story was written, but which now, of course, is a, a part of our life. But generally, the, the, the technologies that we associate with the 30s through the 50s are rockets, robots, flying cars, space travel, um, the technology of, what's, of what you might call the machine age, right? Um, we've just come through a war um, at the, in, the, in the end of the night in 1945 that is won by machines that 50 years prior were the stuff of science fiction. The, the Germans were firing rockets. Um, there, are, there are every year during World War II, there is such an enormous increase in technology. Um, it, it sort of fast forwards technological development so that the planes of 1945 are vastly uh, improved over the planes of 1939. And of course, this technological um, boom in air and space travel continues through the 50s and the 60s with the space race and the, and the competition between the United States and the Soviet Union. Um, so one, for, for this reason, one of the characteristic genres of the Golden Age is what's sometimes called space opera, which is, you know, larger than life characters in far flown galactic empires and colonies and locations. It's the kind of classic stuff you think of when you think of, of you know, science fiction. You might imagine Buck Rogers or, or in some ways Star Wars or, or even Star Trek as, as being this space opera kind of genre. Um, the tone tends to be, and this is not 100%, the tone tends to be optimistic and heroic. They tend to be characters who are very American, very male, and very much engineers often, who, who overcome any adversity with good old ingenuity, know-how, and grit. Um, and these, these are the protagonists of stories by Robert Heinlein and Campbell, but also Asimov and Clark, who imagine technology not as a problem, but usually as a solution. Um, so the, yeah, that's the golden age. Um, we are, um, I'm going to hold off on talking about our subsequent, uh, peer, uh, week two in w which we talk about new wave feminist and cy cyberpunk science fiction. And then talk, uh, in the third week, we're going to deal with contemporary science fiction. We're going to stop here because this video has gotten long enough already, but I hope it's done a good job of orienting you.